things can get a little more complicated when it comes to computing eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Let us first consider the case of repeated eigenvalues. Repeated eigenvalues can come about in a number of different ways. Let's look at a few examples. We're going to start off really simple. Consider the matrix A with entries negative 3, 0, 0, negative 3. What do you notice? Well, it's a diagonal matrix, same entry on the diagonals. That means those are the eigenvalues. Lambda 1, lambda 2, they're both equal to negative 3. You could check that, but it's not that hard. Why? Because what's a good eigenvector? Everything is a good eigenvector. You might say, well, it's, uh, you know, 1, 0, and 0, 1, and that would work. But so would anything else, as long as it's not 0. Okay, that's the nice case, but not every case is like that. Consider the matrix A given by 1, 1, negative 1, 3. That one, we're going to have to compute the characteristic polynomial. So I take the determinant of A minus lambda I. That's quantity 1 minus lambda times quantity 3 minus lambda minus negative 1. Okay, I multiply that out. I get lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. Set that equal to 0, and my roots are 2 and 2. Those are the eigenvalues. They're repeated. To compute the eigenvectors, what do I do? Well, I take a minus 2i, and I hit a vector v with that, and that needs to be 0. That operator, a minus 2i, is negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. That matrix has a kernel that is one-dimensional. There is a one-dimensional eigenspace. I don't know, I could choose v equals 1, negative 1, that would work. There are other things that would work as well, but they're all non-zero multiples of 1, negative 1. This is the more difficult case. The thing to remember when you run into repeated eigenvalues is that everything depends on this operator, a minus lambda i. You look at that guy, and it's kernel. If the dimension of that kernel is 2, that's great. You've got a two-dimensional eigenspace. You can build a good eigenbasis. Everything is really, really nice. But if the dimension of that kernel is 1, that is, you've got a one-dimensional eigenspace, then for the applications that we want, it's not good enough because we need a basis, a basis that is well adapted to the matrix A. So what are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to build a basis using something called a generalized eigenvector. Here is a definition that will get us by for the moment. For a 2 by 2 matrix A with repeated eigenvalue lambda, one-dimensional eigenspace spanned by an eigenvector V, then a generalized eigenvector that is paired to V is a vector W that satisfies the following equation. I take a minus lambda i, I hit w with it, what do I get? Do I get 0? No, because then it would be an eigenvector. This is a generalized eigenvector. a minus lambda i applied to w gives you v. That's kind of weird. Why are we doing that? It's not going to make a lot of sense yet. So stick with me. What I want you to do, if you have never seen this before, is to remember it, because we are going to use it. So then... Do you remember it? What was that? Oh my gosh, what was it? I remember. A minus lambda i w equals v. That is what defines the generalized eigenvector w that goes with v. Let's do an example. Let's pull out that matrix that we just used. 1, 1, negative 1, 3. Repeated eigenvalue, lambda equals 2. One eigenvector that works really well, 1, negative 1. What is the generalized eigenvector that goes with that? We need to solve a minus lambda i w equals v. So that's negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, applied to w equals 1, negative 1. Let's see. Uh, I can do this in my head. This is not so bad. w is uh, negative 2, 1. That works because uh, negative 2 times the first column plus 1 times the second column, that equals v. Good. Or I could have chosen negative 1, 0. That would work just as well. There are multiple solutions to this equation. In fact, there's an entire one-dimensional affine space of generalized eigenvectors. So 
Generalized eigenvectors, not unique. But, and I hear you saying this in your head, why? Who cares? Why are we going to all this trouble? Well, that's not going to make a lot of sense quite yet. What I am going to say is that it's always good to have a basis, to have a basis that is as much of an eigenbasis as possible. And when we can't get true eigenvectors to form a true eigenbasis, then we do the best we can. That's why we're talking about generalized eigenvectors.